NetFlow creates a record of network connections. Once you start looking at your past network activity, you'll find all kinds of things. There is a lot of weird on any network. It's easy to get distracted. At first, you should focus on stuff that is easy to explain, easy to fix, and improves security and functionality. Here are some examples of how you could use NetFlow to improve your network. You can use historical network logs to learn from your attackers. Your attackers provide you with free penetration tests all the time. <laughs> For example, you can detect attack port scans by generating NetFlow data for one of your unused IP addresses. The resultant report might look like this. NetFlow logs are descriptions of network connections and connection attempts. NetFlow, Wireshark, Firewalls, IDS, they all describe the same things. So learning one of them helps you understand the rest. Here, the description includes time, duration, source and destination IPs, and descriptive info about port numbers, TCP states, and the amount of data. These network, record, network records describe real attacks. The destination address has been obscured. You can see several types of attack traffic. The flow records that have the S TCP flag are TCP SYN port scans. These attackers targeted a variety of TCP ports and services, including 445, which is Microsoft Domain Services, and 22, which is SSH. The destination port shows which service is being attacked. The records that have no TCP flags are UDP port scans. These attackers hit a variety of UDP ports and services, including 1434, which is SQL, 5060, which is the voice over IP SIP service, and 123, which is the NTP time service. If you look closely, you will see that the UDP 5060 VoIP packet is quite large. This one is both a scan and an attack. If that packet is delivered to a vulnerable VoIP service, it is an exploit. The one packet that had the AS TCP flags might have been a SYNAC port scan, but it's probably backscatter from a remote SYN flood denial of service attack. That is, somebody spoofed our address in a SYN flood attack, and the poor victim sent a response to us. Once you have information about your attacks, it's vital to learn how your systems responded. So the next step is to pick one of the attacking hosts and generate a NetFlow report for it. For example, uh, SSH port scans look like this. As you can see, this attacker provoked a variety of responses. The flow records that had the S TCP flag represent IP addresses that did not respond to the port scan. The records that had the AR TCP flag represent hosts that politely responded to the port scan connection attempt with an ACK reset packet. Unfortunately, hackers use this response to learn that hosts exist and are accessible. The flows that had a protocol of one and no TCP flags represent hosts that, sent, that politely sent back an ICMP message. 
Again, attackers use this response to learn that hosts exist and are accessible. Finally, the flows that had the ARSF or the ASF TCP flags represent hosts that had SSH servers and allowed the attacker to connect. Bum ba dum bum. Bum ba dum bum ba. On seeing these responses, the defending IT personnel should act to change and improve their systems. Your first action item should be to properly configure all the responding SSH servers. When SSH is used for device management, it should not use the default TCP22 port. Moving away from default ports eliminates indiscriminate attack and makes it way easier to defend and read your logs. It also protects against swiftly moving zero-day attacks. On a 1 to 5 scale, this has priority of 2. Your next action should be to fix all the hosts that responded in any way to the scan. Systems that are exposed to the public internet should be hardened. Their local firewalls should be configured to drop attacking packets. And they should not send back ICMP or TCB reset packets. On the same scale, this would have a priority of four. When you examine SSH attacks, you might also find password guessing. A NetFlow history of password guessing looks like this. This NetFlow report documents an actual SSH password guessing attack. The attacker opens a connection, guesses a few passwords, and then forcefully closes the connection. Then they do it again. If you look at the amount of data going back and forth in each connection, you should see that almost all these connections are the same size. So your next action item should be to fix all the hosts that allowed password guessing. The local firewalls should be configured to detect and block repeated connections, and the SSH servers should detect and block password guessing using things like fail to ban. This would have a priority of two. If you must expose an SSH server on the default port, then it must be able to properly handle a variety of attacks, including password guessing. A wise admin tries to have multiple layers of protection in case one layer fails. And sooner or later, in the IT world, every layer fails. Finally, you would check to see if an attacker was successful in connecting to any of your exposed SSH servers. A successful connection looks like this. Again, this NetFlow documents an actual attack. During these connections, the attacker was exploring the system and installing back doors. Sometimes the only difference between an attack and normal system administration is the source of the activity. This source was at another institution. We weren't sure that this was an attack until we checked with the admin and verified that he was not managing his system from that location. The flow records that have the AP TCP flags represent data going back and forth in a pre-existing connection. The flows that have the APF TCP flags represent a normal close of a TCP connection. And the flows that have the APS TCP flags represent the start of a new TCP connection. When you verify successful SSH connections from an attacker, you should drop everything and start the process of incident response and recovery for the compromised system. This has a priority of one. 
careful and diligent IT personnel will find that NetFlow is a valuable tool. You can monitor and harden your IT systems against current attack. You can also detect unauthorized activity and compromise.